geometrical meaning of the zeros of a polynomial. A real number k is a zero of a polynomial f of x if f of k is equal to zero. To understand the meaning of geometrical meaning of the zeros of a polynomial, first we have to learn the geometrical representation of a linear polynomial, quadratic polynomial and cubic polynomial. Graph of a linear polynomial. For linear polynomial, the graph of y is equal to ax plus b is a straight line. Let us understand it with the help of an example. Let us have an equation y is equal to 3x plus 6. So for different values of x, the corresponding values of y are 0, 6, minus 1, 3, and 1, 9. Now we plot these points one by one on a graph paper as shown. Now we join the points and we get a straight line. From the graph, we can see that y is equal to 3x plus 6 intersects x-axis at minus 2, 0. If 3x plus 6 is equal to 0, then it gives x is equal to minus 2. That means zeros of polynomial 3x plus 6 is minus 2. So, x coordinate of the point where the line intersects the x-axis is also minus 2. Hence, zeros of the polynomial is the x coordinate of the point where the graph of y is equal to 3x plus 6 intersects the x-axis. So, for a linear polynomial of ax plus b, where a is not equal to 0, the graph of y is equal to ax plus b is a straight line, which intersects the x-axis at exactly one point, namely, minus b by a, 0. Hence, the linear polynomial ax plus b, where a is not equal to 0, has exactly one zero, namely the x-coordinate of the point, where the graph of y is equal to ax plus b, intersects the x-axis. Graph of a quadratic polynomial. Let us draw the graph of a quadratic polynomial x square minus 5x minus 6. Now let y is equal to x square minus 5x minus 6. So, for various values of x, the corresponding values of y are minus 2, 8, minus 1, 0, 0, minus 6, 1, minus 10, 2, minus 12, 5, minus 6, and 6, 0. Now we plot these points one by one on a graph paper and join them as shown. We get the graph for the quadratic polynomial. From the graph, we can observe that the coefficient of x square in y is equal to x square minus 5x minus 6 is 1, which is a positive real number. So the parabola opens upwards. The parabola intersects x-axis at two points, minus 1, 0, and 6, 0 respectively. So this quadratic equation has two distinct zeros at minus 1 and 6. By algebraic method, we can factorize the given polynomial into two distinct linear factors. That is, x square minus 5x minus 6 is equal to x minus 6 into x plus 1. So the parabola intersects x-axis at 6, 0 and minus 1, 0. Now we study the graph of a cubic polynomial. Consider a cubic polynomial y is equal to x cubed minus 4x. And for various values of x, we get the corresponding values of y as shown. Now plot the points one by one on a graph paper and join them as shown. We get the graph for the cubic polynomial. And from the graph, we can observe that y is equal to x cubed minus 4x intersects the x-axis at three points, minus 2, 0, 
0 comma 0 and 2 comma 0. Hence minus 2, 0, 2 are three distinct real zeros of this polynomial. From the examples discussed above, we can conclude that in general, a polynomial of degree n can have at most n zeros. Or we can say, geometrically zeros of a polynomial is the x coordinates of the points where its graph intersects or touches the x axis. Relationship between zeros and coefficients of a polynomial. For a quadratic polynomial, p of x is equal to ax square plus bx plus c, where a is not equal to zero. Consider alpha and beta be the zeros of the polynomial p of x and the zeros and coefficients of the quadratic polynomial are related as given below. Alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a and alpha into beta is equal to c by a. So the sum of zeros that is alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a or coefficient of x is divided by coefficient of x square and the product of zeros that is alpha into beta is equal to c by a or constant term is divided by coefficient of x square. If alpha and beta are the roots of a quadratic polynomial, then the polynomial is given by x square minus alpha plus beta into x plus alpha beta. And if alpha, beta, gamma are the zeros of the cubic polynomial of ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d, then alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to minus b by a or alpha into beta plus beta into gamma plus gamma into alpha is equal to c by a and alpha into beta into gamma is equal to minus d by a. Let us understand it with the help of some examples. Example 1. Find the zeros of the quadratic polynomial f of x is equal to x square minus p square plus q square into x plus p square q square and verify the relationship between the zeros and its coefficients. Solution f of x is equal to x square minus p square plus q square into x plus p square q square is equal to x square minus p square x minus q square x plus p square q square is equal to x into x minus p square minus q square into x minus p square or f of x is equal to x minus q square into x minus p square. As we know the zeros of f of x are given by f of x is equal to zero, so it implies x minus q square into x minus p square is equal to zero. Or simply x is equal to q square or x is equal to p square. So the sum of the zeros is equal to minus coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x square is equal to p square plus q square by 1. And the product of the zeros is equal to constant term divided by the coefficient of x square is equal to p square into q square by 1. Example 2. Find a quadratic polynomial when the sum of the zeros and product of the zeros are 4 and 1 respectively. Solution. As we have the sum of the zeros is equal to alpha plus beta is equal to 4 and the product of zeros is equal to alpha into beta is equal to 1. Then the polynomial will be x square minus alpha plus beta into x plus alpha beta is equal to x square minus 4x plus 1. Hence, the required quadratic polynomial is x square minus 4x plus 1. Division algorithm for polynomials. Let us understand it with the help of an example. 
if 1 0 of a cubic polynomial 2x cube plus x square minus 5x plus 2 is 1, then find out the other two zeros of the cubic polynomial. Solution. Let f of x be equal to 2x cube plus x square minus 5x plus 2, where 1 is the zero of f of x, that means x minus 1 is a factor of f of x. Now let us solve it step by step. Arrange the dividend and divisor in descending powers of x and divide the first term of dividend, that is the highest degree term of dividend, by first term of divisor, that is the highest degree term of divisor, that is 2x cubed by x, which is equal to 2x square. This gives the first term of the quotient. Now multiply the divisor x minus 1 into 2x square and write below the first two terms and subtract them. Bring down the remaining terms. Now divide the highest term of the new dividend 3x square by highest degree term of divisor x. Repeat the process and find the next term of quotient and continue the process till the remainder either becomes zero or degree of dividend becomes less than the degree of divisor. Now the quotient is equal to 2x square plus 3x minus 2. So we can write f of x is equal to x minus 1 into 2x square plus 3x minus 2 is equal to x minus 1 into 2x square plus 4x minus x minus 2. So f of x is equal to x minus 1 into 2x minus 1 into x plus 2. Therefore the zeros are 1, 1 by 2 and minus 2. Thus if p of x and g of x are any two polynomials with g of x is not equal to 0, then we can always find polynomials q of x and r of x such that p of x is equal to g of x into q of x plus r of x, where r of x is equal to 0 or degree of r of x is less than the degree of g of x. Division of polynomials with other polynomials by long division method. Example, if x plus a is a factor of 2x square plus 2ax plus 5x plus 10, then find a. Solution. Look at the given polynomial 2x square plus 2ax plus 5x plus 10. Now x plus a is a factor of this. If it is a factor, then it divides the polynomial completely. So let us start it with the long division method as shown. Now we multiply x plus a by 2x and we get 2x square plus 2ax. Now we bring down 5x plus 10 and multiply x plus a by 5 and we get 5x plus 5a. So after solving, we get the remainder is 10 minus 5a. But x plus a is a factor of it. That means it should divide it completely. That is the remainder should be 0. So 10 minus 5a is equal to 0 or a is equal to 10 by 5 or 2. Division of polynomials with other polynomials by long division method 2. Example, find all the zeros of the polynomial x raised to the power 4 plus x cube minus 3x square minus 4x plus 120. If two of its zeros are 2 and minus 2. Solution, we have the polynomial x raised to the power 4 plus x cube minus 34x square minus 4x plus 120 and two zeros are 2 and minus 2. First if 2 is a zero then x minus 2 is a factor. Similarly if minus 2 is a zero of the polynomial then x plus 2 is a factor. So x plus 2 into x minus 2 are the factors of the polynomial. That means x square minus 4 is the factor of this polynomial. 
and this factor divides the given polynomial completely as shown. Now we can write x raised to the power 4 plus x cube minus 34 x square minus 4 x plus 120 is equal to x square minus 4 into x square plus x minus 30. Now we factorize x square plus x minus 30 by the middle term splitting method to get the remaining factors as shown and we get all the zeros of the polynomials as 2, minus 2, minus 6 and 5. Finding the divisor using division algorithm. Look at the polynomial p of x is equal to x cube minus 3x square plus x plus 2. We will divide this polynomial by g of x and we get the quotient q of x is equal to x minus 2 and remainder r of x is equal to minus 2x plus 4. Now we need to find the divisor that is g of x. So by division algorithm method we know that p of x is equal to g of x into q of x plus r of x. Look at this carefully. We have p of x, q of x, r of x and we need to find g of x. So we rewrite the above equation as g of x is equal to p of x minus r of x divided by q of x. Now substitute the given values as p of x is equal to x cube minus 3x square plus x plus 2 minus r of x is equal to minus 2x plus 4 divided by q of x is equal to x minus 2. Now simplify it and we get x cube minus 3x square plus 3x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. Now to find the value of g of x, we use the long division method. As shown in this method, we get the remainder 0 and the quotient x square minus x plus 1. So we get the value of g of x which is x square minus x plus 